guys, welcome back to Dimitri's Garage. I'm here with my buddy, Sean. We've got a ZUM3 again, and Sean, tell us what we're doing today. Uh, today, we're gonna get the oil cooler mounted up, and we should be able to get the expansion tank all put back in. So when we took this oil cooler off, it was zip tied back here in between the radiator and intercooler. So trying to pick a spot for it, I think the, the best route to go is going to be to have it angled, mounted up underneath here. And I got the longer lines and I bought some 90s. So yeah. I'll be able to run it around this and then. And it'll make it real easy with lots of clearance here for the, Absolutely. For the lines. So I think that's so, a great spot. What are we going to do? Are we going to template it up with some cardboard and then uh, take it from there? Yeah, yeah. Find the on center, get the cardboard, figure it out. Get going. Let's do it. All right, so I'm gonna make a mock up of this on here so we can get the holes put into it. Make it a lot easier to get it mounted. All right, so I'm gonna get the holes marked. All right, so let me get this cut. Okay. Okay. So let's find the center of that. I'll mark it six and a half. Okay, so let's make sure this lines up. Yep. Seems good. We're good. So now I've got to find the center of this. So 24 inches. Take the dot off later. Yeah, it'll just come off with some acetone. Okay, so for 12. Get the mock up. Let me do a draw a straight line. Yeah, that's the best. That's how I did my uh, tow hook. If you guys want to see a similar example, there'll be a video in your top right corner and that shows a very similar technique for doing a tow hook. Get on center, make sure it's straight on the flat part of this. I'm gonna get the top of the cardboard lined up to right where it curves up. So that's the farthest point where I can put a hole in. Uh, and then over here on this end. Well, it would be this one right here. Yeah, all that works. Uh, so we'll go on the market there. So we'll drill two holes and get it mounted. Okay, now that the holes are drilled, got some touch-up paint in there so it won't rust. Let's try and get this mounted. That'll probably, probably be good right there. Mm -hmm. so, get you back in there. Okay. Those are like those annoying noises when something doesn't mesh. Yeah. <laughs> there's, I mean, there's room to, to slide this thing, so. All right. I mean, I'm glad I drilled those even. 
Yeah, I was like, hey, I finished drawing those. I didn't really test if they made it up. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so just get it cinched up at a straight angle here. That just looks pretty professional, to be honest. All right, that works. I mean, dude, that's better than uh, before. It's no longer sponsored by Zip Tie. Absolutely. And it's got the rubber isolators on there, so it's not yeah. going to be all crazy. It's awesome. So now we need to get some lines started. Got to put a, or 90 degrees on some hose. Wait, hold on, do that better. Don't feel like this is my box of parts. Explain what it is. This is a, a cardboard box, approximately 12 by 12. You got jokes, son. <laughs> all right. All right. Uh, this is my, my box of all the, the hose and fittings here. I love all the vibrant stuff. It's really good. I would have done how, these fittings are, here. Yeah, how are the jags? Are they pretty good? The reviews were. Okay. I haven't used them before, but we'll see, hopefully. So this hose is gonna be used for the oil fittings in line uh, that are gonna go into that cooler. I got the 90s to come off of the cooler so we can make it easier route around. And since it's coming up, I figured a 45 being able to go into the, the filter housing would, would look best, so. All right, let's get started. So the first thing we're gonna do is figure out the length of the hose that we need for each section. So guys, we already did one fitting uh, just to test out the equipment, it worked. Now we measured it out on car and this is where we need to cut to get our length of hose. So the best thing to do is to use a proper cutter. Um, I bought one for my fuel system video. You wanna tape things up and I'm trying to show you and not drop it as I do it. So now you get a nice clean cut like that and we can take the tape off and we can go ahead and put it in the fitting and I'll show you what that looks like. There we go, minimal, minimal fraying. Now we wanna take this 300 chrono, kinda, man that's some thick oil. You see that stuff come out? <laughs> um, we wanna kinda coat. So one word of caution with these things is do not drop them. Uh, dropping them is very likely to create a leaking fitting. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna disassemble the fitting. And this shows us the Wow, that's a really long thread. This shows us the outer part and uh, the inner compression part. So as this fits in, it compresses the hose from the inside and it makes the hose get stuck inside this outer fitting. So we wanna go ahead and lubricate the inside, lubricate this and the fitting and put it together. So the first thing I like to do is uh, to give it a nice sheen with the oil, same thing on the inside here, and then same thing on the inside in the hose. Now we can set this aside. This is the important part now. So we wanna be really careful to avoid getting any, getting too frayed. Um, this is definitely a little bit of a challenge. So it's slowly making its way to the thread right now. So yeah, Sean's now giving it a shot because my hands got real tired. We were pretty close, but for whatever reason, these JEGS fittings just are real tight. Um, we were actually having a little trouble getting the first one done too. And uh, it's weird. My four innovation stuff was not anywhere near that hard to do. Looks good. So. Oh yeah, that's... I don't know if you guys can tell, but the next step for us is gonna be to mark off with tape 
where the fitting terminated. And the reason we do that is to tell if there was any significant movement in the fitting as it was compressed. And, uh, you know, it doesn't have to be exactly perfect. There's typically a tolerance of a millimeter or so, or maybe a couple of millimeters that is allowed, uh, at least when I was doing the fuel system. Uh, so I would assume that this is, it's okay if it moves just like a millimeter, but you know, there's, there's, there's quite a bit of it in there. What we don't wanna see is like a lot of it move out. So the next step is to get into our soft jaws and you definitely wanna use soft jaws here. I do not recommend holding by hand or assembling on car or any of that sort of nonsense. So as you guys probably recall, we went ahead and lubricated this earlier. Now it should start to fit in here. And uh, you know, we'll first thread it on by hand just to get it going. It's pretty long thread. That's actually, I don't remember my thread being quite that long, this other thing, I don't know. Now what, uh, Sean, you may want to catch me doing this down here. Actually. Whew, my bad. You, you gotta anticipate that I'll elbow you, <laughs> homie. So one thing I'm gonna do down here is I'm gonna push up on the hose to prevent it from pulling out as I compress. So. So now that all the fittings are made, Sean and I are getting them connected to the oil cooler. Once they're connected, we're gonna re-add the front BMW logo. You want the end wrench to get it snugged on? Yeah. Here, I'll grab it for you. Yeah, these are real cool, the adjustables. And it's nice to have two, because uh, on some designs, like especially on my Mustang, there's a thing where you're mating them up, like, two separate pieces and it's way easier when you're tightening them, like on car, especially here, if you have two of them. You can pull one in one direction, one another. Like if there's swivels on both sides. This is a very, very annoying angle. Yeah. Hoses through the route I wanted to go. I wouldn't bolt the fascia on yet in case there's leaks and we need to tighten up. Oh yeah. We just wanna get it into a good serviceable place. So make sure it all comes together here. So now we're just reattaching to the filter cap and uh, you know, I'm gonna snug these things down a little bit with the hand wrench. Okay, so I picked up a set of these Vibrant Dash 6 uh, line separators. Fairly nice and clean. Vibrant makes really cool stuff. I'm a big fan. So Sean's kind of tucking them down there in order to keep the lines nice and separated. All right, looking good. What do we got to do now, Sean? All right, throw the expansion tank on. And, and uh, yeah, flush right. it. So once we got the oil cooler on, along with our new lines, we flushed, rinsed, and refilled the engine coolant. And we actually used this cool little uh, expansion tank that I showed you guys before, this radium tank, and this bracket I actually welded up uh, for Sean, and here's a little clip of us welding.
And that's like a solid piece of metal now. You don't really see the weld anymore. It's just, just solid. So guys, that's pretty much it for the moment. The only thing we really have to do with this car is bed these brakes and we're gonna do a paint correction on it as well as a decontamination. So I think we're gonna do a separate video uh, where I'm just gonna show you how to get the car nice and clean. We're gonna use things like Iron X, we're gonna use a clay bar, we're gonna use all the cool kind of Adams products that I use. And then I think we might see quartz it. Uh, I've been meaning to play with sea quartz again and I'm thinking we might give it a shot on this car, see how it goes. Now, Sean does say he, want to re he wants to redo the hood. Uh, he has this blemish here. And uh, maybe what we'll do is we'll just wax the hood. And uh, that way, when he gets it corrected, um, repaint it or whatever we're going to need to do, um, we'll just see quartz it then. But then we can do the rest of the car now. Get it nice and cleaned up. I think Sean wants to paint this trim. With a nice detail, I think this car is just going to look amazing. I can't wait to get this thing all polished up. I think Sean's going to love the end result, and I just can't wait to see this thing driving around. Maybe we'll kind of drive around with the Mustang behind it, you know, maybe we'll see how they compare. I know with the big turbo, when we do that, Sean's looking to get, you know, similar kind of power output. I think for now, you know, I think there's going to be a pretty big gap in power between the two of them. But when uh, he does get it, it'll be a lot of fun. I bet they're going to be real close. Should be a good race. Anyhow, guys, I'm going to get out of here. Please subscribe. Please like my videos. I really appreciate the comments too. It's why I do it. Thanks guys. I'll catch you soon.